Hey guys, it's the History Nerd, and we're back with another exciting episode of Panzercore Rust Removal. And uh, where we last left off, we'd begun the invasion of England. And as you can see, we've taken two little towns to the far west of the area of operations. And while we are dealing with quite an awful lot of enemy aircraft, and I mean an awful lot of enemy aircraft, a surprising amount of enemy aircraft, actually, um... Things seem to be going okay. Uh, obviously today the weather is rainy, so... Uh, ra rain causes serious problems for your combat operations. Planes are affected the most. They cannot attack or be attacked. They were able to hit me, and then the weather prevents me from, um, from launching planes against them, which is fine. We've got all of our air force in France just sitting there waiting. We need to capture an airfield in England before we can even remotely think about... Um, Getting planes over. There we go. <laughs> Took a while for my brain to kick into what I was trying to say. Uh, let's get our tanks moving. Because if there's one thing that's great for shooting armored cars, it's a freaking tank. Now, let's see. We can get you over into a position which is probably better for you, but we can't get the tank over there. That does suck. That's okay, though. We can still take care of that stupid um, armored car. These guys are going to need a little bit of loss replacement therapy, which I will give them. They're not a core unit, but hey, we we could use the forces. Uh, we will give these guys some elite replacements because they are, of course, my core units. And now I think we're ready to begin pushing into Falkstone itself. So let's get this pioneer unit up. Let's get this Pioneer unit over in here, and let's attack that cement bunker that's going to be a little bit of a problem. It is what the Pioneers are designed to do. Uh, if we move our tank here, what do we got? Any aircraft gun? We should probably take that out sooner than later. Uh, we weren't able to, but that's okay. They weren't able to do much damage to us either. Charging into heavy infantry seems like a pretty darn big mistake. So instead, we'll get rid of the anti-aircraft gun. And then we'll continue on, hopefully able to remove that hangar. And maybe push these guys east into a nicely defendable position, of course. Um, let's get our artillery moving. And I gotta say, I'm a pretty big fan of having three, uh, 15 centimeter artillery pieces set and ready to go. Uh, let's get our tanks moving. We've got pretty much a clear path on the roads now, which is always a good thing. We'll get some more panzers down, we'll get, um, our landing stoop down. We'll move the flak cannon there, we'll get that flak cannon in place, and that tank there. And we've pretty much completed our naval invasion much, much better, I might add, than the um, than the last time that you guys will never see. Because once you lose 50% of your forces on turn 3 or 4, you're not, you're not coming back from that. Even, like I say, even if you manage to take all of the objectives, the next turn, unless you do incredibly well, you're not going to have the prestige to um, to rebuild your forces after. Speaking of rebuilding our forces, I think we're down now to four core units we're missing. Uh, it might not be a bad idea to try and get ourselves... What have we got? 800. So, yeah, we could get ourselves some more infantry. What I will do is move my forces around first to see just what exactly it is that we need. Um, might as well, let's see. We know we're gonna wanna hit the forces in the airfield. We got them suppressed. Um, we might as well see if we can do a bit more damage and we can't, that's fine. Who else are we gonna wanna suppress? Probably these guys, because we're going to want them 
to take out that little cement fort. And then stay? Or do we want him to move? We might want him to move. Um, and actually, let's get some defensive artillery in place. Uh, yeah, we'll clear that out. That's fine. And now, can we... No, we can't. Okay, so let's move you to clear out the hangar. And then we can move our mountain troops to secure the airfield, which is great. Okay. And then we can move our tank up here to start taking this radar installation. And in fact, I think that's a great target for most of the armor that I've got. Can you make it over there? You can, but then you're bordering that land. That's fine. At least we've cleared out the radar installation. I don't know if that actually does anything like, quote unquote, good for us, but it does um, open some space up at least. Let's get some more tanks up on the go. And we can get our other tanks moving off of the beach. Which is good to do. Uh, we'll get our anti-aircraft moving right away. Because we know we're going to have a lot of aircraft to deal with. And we're not really in a defensible position to do so. Um, let's see. What's your experience at anyway? You're basically a rookie unit. We'll give you uh, cheap replacements, because I don't think that's really going to matter. These three guys over here, replace, you're fine with rookies, and you're fine being yourself. Next turn, I think we'll take these three guys and start pushing north. Uh, we don't necessarily need to push too far north. We really more need to focus on an easterly push, but if we can clear out... You know, say that, or work on the forts with infantry, that should be pretty good. Now that we've got a landing field, let's get our air force moving. Because now that we can base them somewhere, we can actually get use out of them, which will be good. And I don't think I want to do that. I'd rather suppress them first. And yeah, losing 50% of our forces is never a good thing uh, when you've got more than one enemy unit stacked up. But... We'll bring you guys down along here. And thankfully, because of the weather, I don't think they'll be able to do anything with their aircraft. Uh, so now, we've got all of our forces all together and landed. Which is good. Let's get these guys rolling. Take care of some of the more northerly things we don't want to have to face. Um, we can move up. I'm sure tanks on hills with trees is not a, an ideal location for tanks to operate in. But, um, you know, what can you do? I guess we'll move you up like this because I wouldn't mind taking care of that any aircraft Vickers and we've got more than enough room for more tanks to come in for this fort. Are tanks the best thing to use when attacking a fort? I'm gonna say probably not. But um... You know, I mean it, it could be a worse choice. Something like that maybe. Well, we lucked out there. The game helped me out a little bit. And I appreciate that they did. We got the Stuk, uh, or the Stug 3B, which I think is, well, it might be an anti. No, it's artillery. So it's kind of like a mortar tank. Uh, you gotta get it, you know, in base-to-base -base contact, but, um, it can do a little bit of damage. 
if memory serves correct for my last time playing Panzer Corps, though, it's not a lot of damage. So, let's see. We got those guys relatively suppressed. Let's try to get those guys suppressed, too. And then let's start the pushing. Good, we'll move you up. I fully expected those guys to be there. I kind of did this in a in a backwards order. I probably should have used uh, my mountain troops to attack that so I could move the grenadiers up and then hit those guys there. As it stands, we're okay because we can move in uh, some basic infantry. We actually didn't take as many losses as I expected they would. Then we can move those guys around like so. And um, we'll set the Falschemiegers up there just to do a little bit of defense. We can rush the boat people up. And um, we can also move in some anti-air there. And here I really wouldn't mind getting those losses replaced. Is that about it? Have we got anything else to move? What have we got selected? That artillery? I don't think so. That artillery's fine. Uh, yeah, that's looking that's looking pretty good to me. Let's go next turn. And as you can see, time is very quickly running out. Um, we might be able to pull this off still. We'll see. Uh, right. So, this turn... Let's get you guys up to take the town. And then we're gonna need... Honestly, we're gonna need more pioneers for that. You can replace your losses. You are still relatively good to fight. Um, actually, we'll leave the anti-aircraft on the uh, airstrip itself. So, what do we want to do here? I'm thinking that might not be a bad idea. And we'll leave an escort for the Stuka there. Um, now what? I guess if we take you and bomb that we can then leave an escort for you like so and then that should be okay uh... now what? we'll take you to pound that and then you can just keep moving because we should have enough troops here to take care of that and continue moving these guys. We're going to risk it. We're going to mount them up. And hope... What is going to be the best bet? Where's my attack, right? No ground defense. Heart attack. Not a heart attack, but a hard attack. Seven... And you're at six. So the best bet would be, although with those there, hmm, hmm, I think I'm going to have to move that guy. And then if you retreat, no, we can't. We're still stuck because of that fort. Yeah, there's no real, no real clear path around. So what we'll do is we'll just do something like that. So we can get our artillery in, we can suppress the fort, do a bit of damage, do a bit more damage, and then get you moving. Like that. And that's really all you can do. Taking an awful lot of damage there. Um, and then what? We're gonna need. We're gonna need our artillery going with us here, so let's mount those guys up, and then let's move this guy in. I'm not sure if I want to take that or not. 
It's not like it can move and do bad things to us. But you never know. All right, next turn. Oh, well, here comes here comes the fleet we were unable to uh, destroy. All right. Now, unfortunately, what I should have done is flown all of my planes over here first to um, refuel them. You're really not doing much damage against targets like that. So... What to do, what to do. I guess we could send you over here. Just to see if you can start doing some damage there. Our Stuka will keep... Hmm. Yeah, our Stuka will keep to the south. And then all of our fighter aircraft will get around the airfield. And then hopefully, if any planes come by, our exceptional uh, anti-aircraft defense here will help us out. Now... If we come around... Wow, that is a big loop around. Thankfully, we didn't come across any enemy units. If you decide to retreat, you should retreat north. Well, you didn't retreat, so... That's a moot point. Uh, let's shell that sucker. See if we can suppress them. And we can! For not much damage from the uh, from the little 38T, so let's suppress him again, and we'll move up a bigger gun, which did no damage. Great, but that's okay because the 38T there killed them all. Yes, tanks shouldn't go in trees. I realize um, at this stage, what am I gonna do? Uh, let's see here. You are not in good shape. Can you hit that? So then we can move you over to basically end that little fortress's life. Get you guys down and over. Uh, we can keep the artillery moving. And then what? I'm starting to think this eastern push with infantry was probably not a good idea. So we'll tell these guys to mount up and join in the fun. I wish the Falschemiakers had trucks, but I guess that makes sense. You can't really jump out of an airplane with a truck. You're going to need to replace your losses. You're fine, but it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to get a few more infantry units set. So we'll get about three of them. Maybe two? We could probably do to get ourselves some more tank units as well. Maybe a Panzer 4D would be good, so we'll do that. Right. You, what can you do? Not much at the moment. So we'll give you some more replacements. <laughs> See, this fleet, it's going to bother me. Because I really don't have much in the way of defense against it. Oh, hello, British Armored. I'm very glad I spent the money on that unit. And I'm glad I bought a replacement Panzer 4D. That is my own fault, obviously, for leaving that guy unsupported way up in the north. Uh, right, okay, so, let's see. We got some aircraft to shoot. And... Let's take care of those guys. 
Our Stuka is in a very bad spot. That is what I have selected. Lovely. So let's get him over there, probably to replace his losses yet again. Um, we've got some kind of bomber over here. So let's get our fighters in to do a little bit of damage. And by a little bit of damage, obviously I mean destroy the stupid plane that was there that I didn't want to deal with. <clears throat> um, I don't have much of a choice here, do I? <sighs> okay, let's move you like that and then up like that and hopefully you're dead. So that's good. Now, I'm of two minds here, right? Like, I want to get inland so we don't have to continually deal with being destroyed by British naval units. But I think going along the coast is going to be, like, the quickest way to get there, terrain-wise, because up in here, it's just, it's not good. We'll resupply you. Uh, I would rather not put you in a swamp if I can help it. Oh, that's why it was... A little bit suppressed. Um... Still not within range, so if we move you up there, now you're within range. We can suppress you again. Wow. That was a surprise. Let's uh, get you going. Chase these guys down as best we can. And then once we get past this point, it looks like the terrain improves a little bit for our push into Dover. That we have to complete in four turns. My god. Um, yeah, that's not... That's not hot. <sighs> okay, yeah, that should be safe there. Um, keeping our anti-aircraft guns with our main forces seems like a smart idea. This terrain effing sucks. What can you hit? That is idiotic. Um, let's just get you guys driving. To cover the distance. And... Hit up next turn. This fleet, man. I tell ya. I don't know what to do. Five! Wow, that super sucks. Whew! Okay, let's see. First things first. Let's take you and see if we can just destroy it. Close. So close. Um, but we're not playing horseshoes or hand grenades for that matter. Close doesn't really cut it. Uh, I would like to move you away from that network of bullshit. Really? At the very least, if we keep this line going, um, they won't... <laughs> They won't be able to, to turn around and attack us. And we should theoretically be able to safely replace some of our losses. Um, well, we've got a good defensive position, I guess. Let's see. Meanwhile, why can't you move too? Why is this the end of your move? We're not blocked by any enemy units. We should be able to go there. Five is good. I'll take that. Can you move up there? You can. Um, oh! Artillery. 
I guess that ended the attack. There, there was the artillery, and they were like, whoa, whoa we're not dealing with that. Um, okay. We want those guys there, but what I would like is to get that artillery in range. No such luck. Okay, well then, we'll just do something like that. We've got some fresh units here that can come in and assist. The regular infantry aren't necessarily the best things to storm those things with. Uh, they can still get the job done. Oh good, we can get you up there. All I wanted was to get a nice clear path. Um, right, that is the extent of your maneuver. Uh, this terrain is just... What to do, what to do. I guess if we keep these guys moving... Like, why? What is so special about this spot that I just can't get units to it? Uh, we'll put you there. And then next turn we might be able to replace your losses. Will that get us in artillery range? It will, so hopefully we can at least suppress them a little bit. We'll get our artillery moving that way. And then what? That is the dumbest idea in history. You should probably replace your losses. We're running very low on prestige. Um... Like so, we don't have any units back there. So now we should just have, like, what the hell am I supposed to do? We got our fighters, but they've got no aircraft. Heck, was that really only one? Wow, okay. Um, let's just keep our fighters protecting the Stuka and then protecting this bomber out there. And at least getting us a bit more vision for potential targets to hit. What do you think, guys? Do you think we can do this? I'm pretty doubtful. Yeah, I expected that to happen. Okay. Oh, wonderful. So you've got one round of shooting to do, so we might as well resupply you, because we can't really do much else there. You're going to retreat? No. Okay. So that's good. We took care of him. Let's grab our fighter aircraft. and go after this hurricane. Uh, right. Now. <clears throat> Let's hit that. That can clear the way. You need to have your losses replaced and, um... I guess we'll go like that. We don't have much of a choice there. Okay. We can get around and flank the artillery. You should probably move back, because you're not really in a state to fight. And I did that all wrong. I should have used the 16th to attack the artillery. Um... instead of the heavy infantry. Hold on. You're gonna need to resupply. You can advance. You can advance. You can advance.
I get... There's just, there's no winning here. Um... Okay, let's get you to bomb that. And we'll leave you as an escort. And I'm fully expecting that truck to get destroyed here. <clears throat> Interesting. Interesting. Seven? I don't know why British tanks can attack from trees fine and I can't. That is... fucking insane. I mean, that was a Panzer 4D. That was the most advanced tank I've got. And I'm not saying the Cruiser Mark IV is a bad tank, I'm just saying I'm surprised that it got killed so quickly. Seven! It hit for seven! I mean, this isn't ideal by any stretch of the imagination here. And I guess what we could do is get that set up in an anti-tank gun uh, configuration. And at least do a little bit of damage. I love me the 88. Okay, so looking at this, uh, if we move you up just a little bit closer, we can then attack with that. We can then move you guys out of the way to... Are you effing kidding me? Okay, so we gotta move you up like that, we gotta move you up like that, and then we can... We can't move you too? Why can't you go there? If infantry can go from here, one, two, three, why can't you go one, two? There's no enemy unit here that's blocking, is there? Is that guy an enemy? No, that's me. So why can't you go there? Did you... <laughs> moving effing units one hex around for no reason whatsoever. Okay, fine. You get down there, you attack the stupid fucking artillery to no effect. For some reason, you can go there. You might as well just stay back. Um, you need more effing things. You need fuel. You should probably come back. And I don't think there's any other uh, aerial operations going on at the moment, so everybody can come back. Just fill up the fuel tanks. That is not a good move. Um, you... I mean, I don't... <sighs> Alright, next turn. I just, we're not winning this.
That totally makes sense. You're surrounded by your own units. Go and surrender to the enemy instead of turn around and talk to the boat people for help. All right, move you up there and attack. Yeah, you just die. Uh, you come up and hit them. And then you do your thing and advance up. You come up and help. Good, you can come back and you can come back. Um like I say it doesn't it doesn't matter at all because we've lost this. Um We can bomb their stupid boats. I'm gonna at least get a little bit of vision. I did not mean to attack that infantry unit. Uh, the game just just took my click. And what else can we do? Really not much. I guess you're in kind of shape to fight. Oh, that's not bad. Sure, I shouldn't have expected you guys to do anywhere near the amount of damage you told me you could. Let's move you up and then move you up and, um, I don't know, can the Stug do anything? Because, I mean, it is artillery. And then get you guys moving. You see, now that we've kind of cleared the area, we can get movement going, but, you know, I mean, at this stage, what's the point? Best laid plans of mice and men. Uh, let's just end it. Yep, that is uh, entirely to be expected. A disappointing result, Air General. The British repulsed our invasion successfully. Consider yourself lucky that you managed to return safely to France. Furthermore, High Command has been looking for scapegoats for the failure of this operation, and most expectedly, you are among them. You're dismissed. Well, that's not really that much of a surprise. Um, I think this is where we're going to leave the Rust Off uh, series. For now. Uh, well, no, forever, really. Um, what we're going to wind up doing, and I'll show you guys here as a little sneak peek of the future. Uh, well, you know what? It's one of two things we could do. So the most recent release for Panzer Corps, or, uh, or update, DLC, whatever you want to call it, is the Soviet Corps campaign. So this one, uh, the year is 1939, and you will command Red Army from border clashes with Japan through the Winter War, German invasion, and all the way to Berlin and Manchuria. So we could do that, or, whoops, that is not at all what I wanted to do, or we could take a look, and this is what I'm talking about. So this is the Grand Campaign, um, which... Each of these years are kind of designed to take sort of the same length of time, maybe a bit shorter, but it's, it's a more focused um, experience than, than the main Panzer Corps campaign, which, uh, if you remember, had you invading Poland from the start, and then you had one battle in Poland, and then you moved west. So in this case, like the Grand Campaign... You start off with a lot more uh, activity going on in Poland. As you can see, the Grand Campaign of 1939, Germany launches its military invasion of Poland, igniting World War II. And then, so you fight through that entire Grand Campaign, and then at the end of it, you can save your forces and load them into the Grand, Cam Grand Campaign 1940, with German attention turns to the west, with a dairy campaign to topple its old enemy, France. And so then, it goes through those... 
Um, and like I say, there's there's a lot of them, and there's roughly the same size-ish as, um, just go back to, no, that, there we go. It's roughly the same size as um, the main campaign. Might be a bit shorter, but it's definitely, it's longer and more in-depth into each tour of duty, if you will. So, let me know what you guys want to see. Soviets or the Super F and Long Grand Campaign. I will say this. With the Grand Campaign, it's a long, long thing. And I certainly, as you can see with Operation Sea Lion, have no illusions of me actually completing the game, the Grand Campaign, completely. Um, so... Basically, my idea with the way Panzer Corps is going to go is if I hit a mission where I lose it, uh, I'm going to give it one more try. And if that doesn't work, then, then you know, the game beat me. Well done, game. Um, I'm not going to turn the difficulty down. It's always going to be uh, on Colonel because that's just the basics. But, um, yeah, so with the Grand Campaign, don't expect... Basically, I'm not going to slog myself continually through the Grand Campaign just to reach the end. Eventually, we're going to lose. And I mean, it's the same for the Soviet Campaign, too. Just keep that in the back of your minds. I am by no means a great Hex War game expert or good player of said games. There's just something about this game in particular that tickles my fancy and that I enjoy. So let me know what you guys want to see, Soviets or Grand Campaign. And that's going to be it. So thumbs up. Uh, thumbs up if you have enjoyed this episode. Leave your comments, questions, concerns, thoughts, jokes, musings, what have you below. Thank you all very much for watching.